OSU's loss caps off coach Eddie Sutton's 34th year as head coach without a national title. The march to a championship over tonight. We're live in San Antonio. How these decked out cars could affect your drive on the highway. Spring ahead, fall backwards. The history behind tonight's time change and how it could save you money. Eyewitness News 5 starts right now. Another tight game for the Cowboys, but this time the results are a disappointing loss. Good evening, everyone. I'm Cherokee Ballard. The march to a championship ends in San Antonio tonight, and that's where we find sports extras Mark Rogers and Brent Skarke. Guys? Cherokee, what a roller coaster ride of a game, just like in East Rutherford last Saturday. Oklahoma State comes up on the short end. John Lucas hits another big shot, but it's not enough to get him over the top. Exactly. Last week, Jameer Nelson misses. This week, Will Bynum makes the shot in a game that started really, really poorly for the Cowboys. Georgia Tech hot from the outside. The final score 67 to 65, but it boiled down to one final play when Georgia Tech guard Will Bynum made the Cowboys pay. They had to get a playoff. It was either going to be in our uh, elder's hand, our Jack's hand, um, or Bottom's hand. So, you know, it ended up in Bottom's hand, and they ran a pick and roll where they've been running the whole night, a high post rub. When we called the timeout, we actually were going to put Weatherspoon in the game for Lucas. Mm -hmm. And he was headed to the scores table to take John out of the game, and we were going to put Weatherspoon on Bottom. And at the last minute, uh, we changed our mind and probably wish we would have. Well, Bottom came off the screen. And um, did a hesitation hesitation move and uh, John was John stuck by him and uh, I, I had to stay on my man. So uh, you know if I would stay, you know if I would went, then they would throw the chance he probably would have got an easy bucket. So uh, you know it was kind of a, a split decision of what I had to do. Yeah, Will is a, he's an explosive point guard and good luck to him in the next game. So Georgia Tech advances on after that 67 to 65 win. Georgia Tech with some very, very talented guards. They had a little more depth than the Cowboys tonight, and that was the difference. It was, and early it was Lewis because he had all those three-pointers. But when it came down to it, they had a lot of options. They chose Will Bynum, the guy who almost transferred to OSU. Instead, went from Arizona to Georgia Tech, not Arizona to OSU. We talked to that. We talked with him about that after the game. This is the biggest shot I ever took in my life. I mean, it's like a dream come true, making a shot like this at this high level. I mean, words can't describe how I feel right now. There was no doubt that we were going to put the ball in Will Bynum's hands. We wanted to run a, a, a screen and roll from the top of the key. Um, because of his heart and his competitiveness, we felt that was the best option. And even the kids in the huddle, we talked about what we should run. I asked him, what do you want to run? I think Marvin's the one that spoke up and said, let's, let's give it to Will. Let's run a, the ball screen to the top. And, you know, just live with his decision. I mean, it felt even better to be against Oklahoma State. But, I mean, it was like words can't describe how I feel. So, you know. so much irony there, too, because had he in turn transferred, John Lucas might not be with the Oklahoma State Cowboys. He's the guy that hits the shot before, but Bynum hits the one that counts. His penetration and Luke Schenser inside, the big man had a double-double. That was the difference in the ballgame. Jack really didn't do a whole lot against Oklahoma State, and then also B.J. Elder. His ankle was really bad, and he was not really ever uh, a factor in the ballgame. The Oklahoma State fans, though, were a huge factor here today. The Alamo Dome was lit up with orange. The Cowboys fans supported this team all season long. A great year. We caught up with a few after the game. Exactly. We've been doing all season, you know, fighting, fighting, scratching all season. But, uh, you know, better team won today. Breaks just didn't go all issues way. You know, it was a tight game. One shot at the end. I thought OT definitely. I was hoping they'd miss that last one to take it to overturn. Well, no one could be more proud. You know, it's a it's a disappointing loss, especially for Coach Sutton. But uh, we're very proud of the Cowboys. It's been a good year. It's been a good year, and there's been a lot of times where we've we've had some good bounces. But tonight, we just we just made a couple too many errors. But again, it was a good year, and we'll have a good year next year. We're as my man Eric Eplin, who is now going on to law school, made almost every Oklahoma State game this year, with the exception of the win over Pitt, in which the uh, president, Dr. Schmidley, <laughs> took over the garb in the orange bathrobe. But uh, that's what you see, I think, in a microcosm of Oklahoma State fan support. And they rolled out huge down here, Brent. It's sad to say that crazy wig robe guy is not going to be anymore. But 
Exactly. A ton of fans. They outnumbered everyone three, four to one. I talked to a Connecticut fan, and they get, gave me the standard, is there anyone left in Oklahoma? Because everyone that was wearing orange was down here. Long lines trying to go through security uh, earlier today for everybody to get into the arena, the screening process. But uh, there was certainly a big time a presence of orange in the stands at the Alamo Dome. And when they erupted into orange power, Brittany, you made the remark that it sounded like gallagher Iba Arena. Exactly. And when they left, they saw that it's been quite a while since they won a championship. Quite a while since 1946 when uh, Henry Ivas boys beat North Carolina and Oklahoma State. It's going to be another year, but I think Oklahoma State's got a pretty good squad coming back next year. And the Cowboys uh, will try to get right back here to the Final Four. They lose Tony Allen, and that will be incumbent upon Stevie Graham to step up and uh, try to uh, take over the role for Tony Allen. Of course, lose some other seniors. So uh, we'll see Oklahoma State certainly will bounce back and be one a big factor next year in the NCAAs. We heard from some fans here that weren't too happy, but we've got another guy talking to fans up in Stillwater, right? That's right. Our Tim Sakahara is on location in Stillwater. Tim. Well, guys, there's no doubt. There's a lot of sad fans out here in Stillwater. Disappointed their team couldn't win tonight to make it to the championship game. Of course, many of them are still celebrating the season, saying that they're proud of their team just for making it to the Final Four. And many of them say that, you know, the only thing that can make tonight's loss even worse is if there was trouble out there on the streets. The loss isn't stopping these fans from having fun or from being proud of their team. The only four teams make the Final Four, and we're one of them, so why not celebrate it? You know, it was a rough loss tonight, but we had a good time doing it. But just in case, Stillwater police called in backup. 25 Tulsa deputies made the trip just in case crowds got unruly, win or lose. OSU has the greatest fans in the world. We're certainly not expecting any trouble. But an event like this also brings people from out of town, and we just want to be prepared in case we have anything happen. And the added presence on the street is working as rambunctious fans are keeping the peace. Garden. We saw eight of them drive by our house tonight, and uh, <laughs> kind of made us a little nervous, so we're going to stay at the house. Don't worry. <laughs> So a Brooks and Dunn concert going on tonight. The extra police force will be out until that concert lets out and until the bars close, just in case anything were to happen later on tonight. Now, of course, we did check in with police so far. Nothing out of the ordinary for a routine Saturday night. And, of course, the police say the worst thing that's happened tonight so far is, of course, tonight's loss. With that, guys, we'll send it back to you guys down in San Antonio. All right, thanks a lot, Tim. we got much more coming up in sports. Brent, we will hear from reaction why the Cowboys got off to a slow start and just how good Georgia Tech was. So that's coming up in sports. Now back to you, Cherokee. Thanks, guys. Many people stayed inside today to see OSU play, but today's weather certainly was nice for anyone who wanted to be out and has your first forecast, Frank. More of this, we hope. Yeah, gorgeous weather today, and it looks like tomorrow's going to be another nice day. A chilly night ahead tonight but it'll warm up quickly tomorrow morning just like what it did today. I look outside, we've got some clouds across western parts of Oklahoma, some heavy rain across west Texas and eastern New Mexico. They're likely seeing some flooding across parts of eastern New Mexico, snow up in the mountains, and you know, I misspoke at 6 o'clock, Taos, New Mexico Ski Resort is open until next weekend, so there is still some good skiing out west. A lot of heavy snow up in the higher elevations. Temperatures across the state, we've got a cool down heading our way for tonight. Right now we are in the 40s and 50s, 59 degrees in McAllister. Cool spot in it right now at 49. So it'll be a chilly night tonight, but another nice day for tomorrow. Lots of sunshine, light winds, temperatures on the mild side. We do have rain on our way. We'll talk about that coming up in a few more minutes. For now, this is the latest from the First Alert Weather Center. Thank you, Frank. One driver trying to avoid another is the cause of a deadly accident along I-40. Oklahoma Highway Patrol troopers worked to clear the area just west of Shawnee for almost three hours this afternoon. They tell us a driver turned into the median to turn around, and the 70-year-old man swerved to miss that car and drove head-on into a semi. Edgar Garcia had been driving trucks for about eight years and says this was his first wreck. Honest God, I, I never, you know, I don't, I don't try to do nothing wrong to them, but, you know, I feel sorry for them, but nothing I can do. The older driver was killed on impact. This accident, they believe, was caused by the driver turning around in the median, and we're told that is illegal. Driving here in Oklahoma City may be a little slow and go near the airport. The on and off ramps of both east and westbound I-40 at Meridian will be closed tonight. The reason? That's the sounds of the Street Rod Show. It's in town this weekend, and at night, the cars drive up and down Meridian near I-40. This year, the drag is a little bit different, though. The city council banned alcohol sales on the Strip. Usually, they used to go by, you know, with the alcohol and this loud and everything, but now you don't see that much, and it's better. 
The straight ride show runs through tomorrow at the State Fair Park. Those on and off ramps will be open early in the morning. An OSU signed basketball, an OU football, and a puppy all up for grabs tonight at Taste for Sight. The food and wine tasting event is always held each year to raise money for Prevent Blindness Oklahoma. While everyone has lots of restaurants to choose from, the reason they're here is simple. Matt Clark is a board member. Why not keep the kids who are healthy and who might have a chance to, if they get screened now and get some kind of blindness or something detected early, why not do it for them? I had the honor of being the co mc for the event. Prevent Blindness provides free screening for Oklahoma school children. This year, they plan to screen almost 100,000 kids. Springing forward always seems a bit difficult. We lose an hour of sleep tonight, but the government decided to change the clocks way back when to save you money. We'll explain. It helps to repel the actual critters that carry West Nile. We haven't heard much about that this season so far, but as the temperatures start to get warmer, Oklahoma is getting prepared. A new type of clothing that has the insects buzzing off. Eyewitness News 5. The fastest growing news station in Oklahoma. The fastest growing news station in Oklahoma. The fastest growing news station in Oklahoma. We take you to the scene live as news happens. Speeds were up to 90 miles an hour at one point. He was metaflooded to an area hospital. We are on the scene of a major house fire. More. More. More people are watching. More people are watching. Eyewitness News 5. Live. Local. Late breaking. Well, tonight marks the beginning of daylight saving time when most of us lose an hour of sleep. But it's more than just changing your clock. We explain why it's a time-honored tradition. It's new tonight. If you feel you're in the dark about daylight savings time, you're not alone. Do you know the name of the day where we change our clock? Uh, daytime, daytime savings? Uh, time savings day? It's either daylight savings time or Eastern Standard Time changeover day. <laughs> time to check your fire extinguisher. If you want to be nitpicky, it's daylight saving time. Singular, not savings. That's what you put in the bank. We change clocks twice a year, on the first Sunday in April and the last Sunday in October. An easy way to remember what to do when. Spring ahead, fall backwards. Today, it's used in every U.S. state except Hawaii and most of Arizona and Indiana. Even if you've got the logistics down, a lot of people are still in a time warp about why we change our clocks at all. And why do we do that? Why would you do that? Because it's mandatory. I think it had something to do with, with um, with trade. I know the Interstate Commerce Commission is the one that, that, that I, I'm pretty sure that they're the ones in charge of that, that thing. Actually, it was Benjamin Franklin who had the bright idea in 1784. Since then, about 70 countries have given daylight saving time the green light. Many, including the United States, adopted it during wartime. War takes an economic toll on a nation, and extending daylight hours during waking hours reduces the use of electricity. So during World War I, President Wilson established daylight saving time as a national fuel saving measure. Decades later, if you still don't know whether to go forward or backward, at least you know it's saving money. Officially daylight saving time, no S, begins at 2 a.m., meaning with the time change, it becomes 3 a.m. Most of us will move our clocks up one hour before going to bed. If you're lucky, you remember to do that, but it's also a good time to change the batteries and your smoke detectors as well. Well, time is not what it used to be in Norman tonight. Part of the town has been transformed. It's going back 500 years and taking the best of the world from then, bring it forward and play with it. It's chivalry, honor, all the good things in life that we seem to have forgotten today. You get to come out and have a good time, not be yourself, be somebody else. It's the 28th annual Medieval Fair in Norman. And organizers say it's a family event full of minstrels, jugglers, belly dancers, jousting, and even a human chess game. This year, the event's being held at Reeves Park. That is across the street from Lloyd Noble. You can park at the arena, and admission is free. The Medieval Fair's last day is tomorrow, and events will run from 10 to 6.30 tomorrow night. Well, new tonight, a way to keep the bugs away without all that smelly stuff. Buzz Off introduced their insect repellent clothing today in Oklahoma City. Now, they feature an entire line of shirts, hats, and pants for men, women, and kids. It's the only repellent clothing registered with the Environmental Protection Agency.
It's treated in such a way that for 25 washings, you know that it has the ability to repel uh, all those critters. And you, so then you're not worried about putting, say, a product, an alcohol-based DEET or whatever, on your skin or putting it on your children's faces, worried about it running down in their eyes. Buzz Off also features a 30-plus SPF to repel the sun as well. You can check the clothes out at Backwoods. That's Northwest 122nd. And man, I'd be curious to see if that works. Yeah, that is neat. Yeah. And you know, uh, you wonder about mosquitoes. You know, a lot of moisture. So far mm -hmm. this year, we've had a lot of rain. Mm -hmm. you remember last year, it was very dry this time of year. Right. So you can probably expect we'll have more I mosquitoes. I think I've seen there. some already. Yeah, I've seen, I've seen some of those big, huge Yeah, there's a few. <laughs> I saw one today in the newsroom. <laughs> kind of scary looking. Yeah, um, you know, we've got some great weather across Oklahoma. Gorgeous. And it looks like it is going to continue, which is the good news. A look at our weather headlines. We've got some nice weather on the way for tomorrow. Another day just like today. Now, it's going to be chilly tonight. We've got uh, dry air across Oklahoma that filtered in. And with the drier air, it cools down quicker at night. So it's going to be a cool night tonight. And because it's going to be a little cooler than it was last night, it'll be a little bit cooler tomorrow as well. But it's still going to be very, very nice outside. Remember to spring forward tonight, change the batteries in your smoke alarms. And tomorrow, more sunshine and light winds, just like today. Outside right now across the metro neighborhood network sites, temperatures are in the 50s. We've got that light north wind, less than 5 miles an hour. And that is bringing in the slightly drier air across Oklahoma. And that will allow our temperatures to get a little bit cooler tonight. But we're not talking anything drastic. You won't notice the temperature difference tomorrow. It's still going to be a gorgeous Sunday across the state. The Almanac from today, a very nice Saturday. The high temperature today up to 70 degrees, right about where we should be. The low last night was 48 degrees. We will be a little bit cooler than that tonight. And we probably won't quite make tw uh, 70 degrees tomorrow. No rain today, lots of sunshine today, and there's a look at our records, 92 and 21 degrees. The satellite picture, we've got uh, the same thing we've seen the last two days. We're right on the edge of this storm system. So Oklahoma, we're in the clear, partly cloudy skies tonight, but go back west, west of Amarillo, Texas, near the Texas-New Mexico border. Some heavy rain, heavy thunderstorms, and heavy snow off into the mountains. They've seen over a foot of snow in Taos, New Mexico the last 24 hours, and they will get lots more. So still... This is your last chance to go skiing this season because the ski resorts will be closed soon. But some rough weather out there this weekend. We can take a look at where the storm system is. It's actually way back to the west. It's over southern New Mexico. You can see, excuse me, southern Arizona. You can see the rotation here. And this storm system is stationary. It is not moving. So tomorrow morning, it's still going to be right there. And because the storm system is not moving, we're going to see another day just like today. High pressure in control, mostly sunny in the morning, partly cloudy in the afternoon. And watch the rain staying out west, west Texas, New Mexico. That's where the rain is going to be tomorrow. Maybe a few showers in the panhandle, but the body of the state will be dry tomorrow. Looks like another gorgeous Sunday. Here's a look at low temperatures tonight. It'll be a chilly night. 30s across northern Oklahoma, 40s across southern parts of the state. And then high temperatures tomorrow. A couple of degrees cooler than today, generally 60s across the state, but still a gorgeous day across the state. You really won't notice a whole lot of difference with our temperatures tomorrow. Mainly clear skies tonight, 43 degrees tomorrow. Sunny to partly cloudy, 67 for the high tomorrow with light winds. It'll be dry. Another very nice day tomorrow. And here's a look at that seven-day forecast. Clouds increasing on Monday. Temperatures in the middle 60s. Rain arriving Monday night. It will continue into, into Tuesday, perhaps a few showers Wednesday. Next front on Thursday, and another chance for rain coming up next weekend. Temperatures will stay about where they should be this time of year, which means in the 60s. You're up to date with the latest First Alert forecast. Sports Extra, March to a Championship. The March to a Championship has ended here tonight in San Antonio. Oklahoma State falls to Georgia Tech, 67 to 65, but another unbelievable game with another unbelievable finish. Exactly. John Lucas was the hero against St. Joe's, almost the hero tonight against Georgia Tech, but Will Bynum, a guy that almost went to Oklahoma State, comes, hits the last bucket to push him over the top, and Georgia Tech gets the win. And so many storylines involved in this ballgame tonight. One of those is that Will Bynum, who was on his way to Stillwater from Arizona and drove on to Georgia Tech to play with the Yellow Jackets. Oklahoma State needed a point guard. Bynum leaves. And then, of course, the rest is history with John Lucas. But the game came down to a final play between Lucas, who was guarding Bynum. Bynum hits the shot, and the Cowboys lose tonight 67-65. to It was a disappointing locker room for Oklahoma State. Our team needed me. Uh, man, it was, it was on other guys to step up, and we just didn't, none of the guys as a whole just put it all together. And 
Yeah, I mean, they just executed really well. I think that, uh, you know, yeah, they did a real good job. And, they, I mean, they hit some shots. I mean, you know, hey, got to give them credit. They hit, uh, hit a lot of big shots in the first half and kind of got them on a roll, and we were always in the, we were in the hole from the, from the beginning. I, I failed. And, you know, I usually never fail. And, you know, I failed this time. You know, I said I wanted to get coaches first, NCAA. And, you know, it was one of my goals coming in, and I failed at it. So... I didn't think that John Lucas had a very good first half. Um, on the defensive end, he gives up four threes to Lewis and five, five, you know, five overall because Bonham made one on him, and that was really the difference. And they got going, and then we were playing catch up the whole second half. Cowboys couldn't rally, and they had to face some very difficult guards in the last three games. Krauser at Pittsburgh, then the great backcourt at St. Joe's with Weston Nelson, and then another great backcourt here at, at Georgia Tech tonight. I think they've got some pros on this team. They do, and the big story there was Lewis with all the threes early. They dug the big hole. They couldn't come back from it. Luke was huge. Incher was big down low, second half for Georgia Tech. That really... It was a mountain that OSU could not climb. 12 points was the biggest lead for Georgia Tech at one point. OSU pulls and ties the game with the Lucas shot, but then Bynum hits the shot down the stretch. Lucas, a big factor in this game because you heard Sean Sutton say he didn't play the greatest defense in the first half and then didn't play the greatest defense in the second half, especially when it counted against Will Bynum. I thought the game from our standpoint was lost in the first 20 minutes. It seemed like we were playing catch up uh, after that. No, I'm just hurt right now. Um, I just put all, you know, the blame on me. I was supposed to lock up, and I didn't. And that's basically all you can say. It doesn't matter what that, if I hit the shot, I didn't do my part on the other end. And John had a hard time all, all day as far as defending. I'm not sure I've seen him play defense as poorly as he did today because when we put him on a penetrator, then he couldn't contain him. So uh, I don't know how John feels. It was just a real tough afternoon for him. I think nobody will take this loss harder than John Lucas, who will, you know, he'll work to get Oklahoma State back here to the Final Four again next year. He carried the team on his back for most of the season. A great player, but it just didn't happen for him tonight on the defensive end against some pretty good guards. Exactly. A lot of guards that can do different things. Some shoot jump shots, some penetrate, and Bynum was the guy. They wanted the ball in his hands down the stretch because they knew Bynum had the hot hand and could penetrate, could get the easy bucket, and it worked well for him. All right, let's take a look right now at some of the statistics in the game tonight. We'll take a look at the Cowboys first. OSU, Joey Graham, a nice night. He has a double-double, 17 points and 10 boards, but Graham uh, down the stretch. Played solid tonight. Oklahoma State also got big-time production from Ivan McFarland. Inside McFarland, almost a double-double with 11 points, and he did a good job of getting in there in the glass and getting around Schenzer. Exactly, eight points. And early on, he was much quicker than Schenzer, but then they figured out how to counteract that with just his sheer size, and Schenzer was big. Let's take a look at Schenzer's numbers and the rest of the Georgia Tech guys, too, because they were very big. Schenzer, 19 points in this game, 12 rebounds and he was a major presence down low. Well, he has gotten better and better and better this year, and I think he's a reason why Georgia Tech's going to have a, a great chance to win the national championship. We know that Georgia Tech will face UConn in that national title game. Schinser and Okafor, that's going to be one to watch. I think it'll be a, a great matchup there. But Schinser was good, but the whole backcourt, Jack was tough tonight, I, and then buying him down the stretch, and you heard Coach Paul Hewitt say it. We wanted to put the ball in Will Bynum's hands. It was almost a unanimous vote from the team, and his penetration is very difficult to stop, and they broke off those screens from those big athletic guys out front in this very difficult matchup. Kind of the same way that Pitt beat OSU, yep. or Pitt beat OSU with that high screen around the high post. You know, B.J. Elder had the t twisted ankle, wasn't sure if he was going to be 100%, and we talked all night about if he was going to be 100%, would that be a factor? Oklahoma State holds him to only two points. They played good defense at times against certain players, but Luke was big down low, a lot of easy buckets for Schenzer, and he was the factor in this game. But, like you say, you look to the future, OSU's cupboard is still very full. Oh, that's right. Got a lot of guys coming back, and uh, Stevie Graham will step in for Tony Allen. But we got more to come in the sportscast. We will check in on the Oklahoma City Yard Dogs, their first ever game up the turnpike tonight in Tulsa, and the Sooners, a scrimmage on Owen Field in Norman Sports Extra returns to San Antonio after this. <laughs> Little scrimmage action going on at Owen Field in Norman. Sooners Paul Thompson finds Bubba Moses. Oh, they're going to be calling Paul Thompson's name. The talk shows are going to be lit up. 17 for 23, 155 yards. Dante Hickson also had a nice afternoon. He rambled for 39, and the Sooners have a couple more weeks left. 
down to Texas. Texas's scrimmage official game was today, but OU Red Whites April 17th. April 17th in Norman. All right, the Oklahoma City Yard Dogs had their inaugural game tonight at the Tulsa Convention Center taking on the Tulsa Talons, and there will be a huge rivalry developing between these two huge. teams. Because this game goes right down to the wire, much like the Oklahoma State contest. Yard Dogs down 7-zip. Craig Strickland. Team on Marshall tied at 7, and Oklahoma City takes the lead. Johnny Bayless, five yards out, rumbles in and scores. And it's 66-63 to in overtime. Tulsa has the lead in that contest. Going right down to the wire. So that one's going right down to the wire. That game not yet completed. So, uh, again, to sum it up, tough loss tonight, 67-65. We will see you again here from San Antonio on Sports Extra tomorrow night. <laughs> Well, we hate to brag, but we got an award tonight. Actually, there's Rick Mitchell picking up an award. Yeah, the best weather cast. Uh, this is at the Oklahoma Association of Broadcasters. Congratulations, Rick. And we got uh, award for sports as well. Sports special. We are proud of ourselves. <laughs> and we're glad you watched tonight. We'll see you back here tomorrow.